Today, I'm going to talk about 2024 guidelines for perioperative cardiovascular management of non cardiac surgery, a stepwise approach to perioperative cardiac assessment. And this is the chart, flow chart for the cardiac assessment, but I'm going to go through this uh, step by step. So you get a patient for non-cardiac surgery. Then you need to look at the cardiovascular risk factors, the disease or symptoms the patient has. When you talk about cardiovascular risk factors, you're talking about hypertension, smoking, high cholesterol, diabetes. Women uh, more than 65 years old and men over 55 years old. Obesity and family history of premature coronary artery disease. Now it's simple if there is none of these, you can just proceed to surgery. But if there are these uh, risk factors, disease or symptoms are present, then you have to look at if it is an emergency surgery or elective surgery. If it is emergency surgery, we have uh, no time to assess further, so we proceed to surgery. But if it's not an emergency surgery, then in that case, we need to look at if the patient has Acute coronary syndrome, is there unstable cardiac arrhythmias, is there decompensated heart failure? If there are uh, these factors are present, then you need to manage the acute cardiac condition and discuss these with the multidisciplinary team for either deferring the surgery, if it is not an emergency, maybe required non-invasive treatment that is conservative management of the surgical condition or even maybe palliation. But if none of these acute symptoms are present, in that case, we need to estimate the perioperative cardiac risk. So we need to use various risk calculators for adverse cardiovascular events. Example, we tend to actually use the revised cardiac risk index, the RCRI. Thank you. We also need to look at if the patient has any of the risk modifiers. Now, these are not risk factors. These are risk modifiers. If the patient has got severe valvular heart disease, example, he has a patient got aortic stenosis, has a patient got severe pulmonary hypertension, is there elevated risk adult congenital heart disease, which may be operated upon or un unoperated, prior coronary stents, or the patient had uh, coronary artery bypass graft, is had recent stroke, does he have pacemaker or ICD, or is the patient frail? Now, there are many uh, cardiac risk uh, score systems, uh, but as anesthetists, we tend to actually use the revised cardiac risk index, uh, in which you look at the ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, history of heart failure, patient with diabetes on insulin, if the patient had got CKD uh, with serum creatinine more than two milligram per deciliter, and it's a high risk procedure, that is, it is either intraperitoneal, intrathoracic, or vascular surgery. And each of these is given at one point. There is also, uh, you look at that when you have, uh, you know, 13 to 25 points, or sorry, this is not looking at that, this is looking at the old system. The RCRI is class three and class four, where there are uh, scores of two or three plus. Three plus is obviously highest risk. And any patient who's got RCRI score of more than one is considered to have elevated risk. There are other uh, ones like the surgical uh, outcome risk tools uh, or SORT. Uh, in which they also look at the age group of the patient, ASA class, uh, urgency of surgery, uh, what specialty that the surgery uh, belong to, is it a cardiac surgery, vascular surgery, thoracic surgery. Uh, severity of surgery also looked at, and it also looks into if there's cancer or not. So it is also useful. So it can be used in combination with us. All right. Anyway, once we have actually looked at uh, you know, the risk modifiers, and we've calculated the risk. We then look at uh, patients uh, depending on the calculated risk. So if the calculated risk is low, that is RCRI is less than or equal to one, and there are no risk modifier, you can go ahead uh, with the surgery without any issues. 
And like I said, elevated risk is wherever the RCRI is more than one or character risk of the maze with any perioperative risk calculated is more than 1%. Now, if the patient has got elevated calculated risk, but there are no risk modifiers, okay. So these patients are asymptomatic without established coronary vascular disease or cardiovascular disease. Uh, in that case, you get a totally ECG and you can uh, consider guideline directed management therapy uh, initiation. Uh, this is for uh, reducing the long term cardiovascular risk and disease management. Now, the important ones are where the risk modifiers are present with any calculated risk. Okay, so this is not, uh, you know, just elevated uh, risk, but there are risk modifiers. So, the patient might have, like, like for example, uh, you know, severe aortic stenosis, or patient might have had a stroke. Uh, so, this is with any calculated risk. Factors. So, in this, uh, consider uh, appropriate team based consultations that is, do a, a multidisciplinary team meeting uh, regarding timing of the non cardiac surgery and uh, look at perioperative darkness tests and uh, management. What are we going to do? So, 12 ADCG, uh, absolutely necessary in these patients. Um, we can uh, look at the echocardiogram for suspected moderate to severe heart disease. Uh, like aortic stenosis, mitral stenosis, or regurgitation. Uh, we look at echo if there is a new dyspnea or new onset dyspnea, or there is suspected uh, new or worsening ventricular function. And in these cases, we will consider a guideline directed management therapy or GDMT, as it is called. And these are initiated not only for the treatment, but also for long-term cardiovascular risk reductions. Also, we need to look at these two groups. That is the one uh, which have got risk factors. Uh, uh, to how they are functionally, you know, are they poor or not functional capacity? Uh, that is uh, looking at their activities, the maps, uh, if they are, uh, you know, uh, raised the risks or their poor function. In that case, uh, we, uh, you know, if they're not present, then we actually proceed to surgery. But if there is poor functionality, in that case, we need to actually assess these patients further. And we have to look at if the further testing will impact our decision-making or perioperative care. Now, if this is not going to make any difference to it, then we can uh, proceed to surgery or uh, consider alternative strategies. Like we may say, okay, let's defer the surgery because it's not going to make any difference or consider whether we can actually have conservative management or is this uh, for palliation. Now, if you think that maybe if we uh, you know, do further tests, uh, it can help us in decision-making, then in that case, we need to actually look at the preoperative biomarkers. In our case, we normally do the anti-pro BNP. We can also do troponin levels. Now, abnormal uh, biomarker threshold in this case is troponin more than 99th percentile of the for regular limits. Uh, for the assay of BNP of more than 92 nanogram per liter or anti-pro BNP more than equal to 300 nanogram per liter. Now, if these biomarkers are normal, then uh, we can uh, proceed with a surgery uh, with obviously a higher risk explained to the patient. If the uh, biomarkers are abnormal, in that case, we need to go back to the MDT, uh, the multidisciplinary team, uh, discuss regarding the risk and benefits of additional cardiac evaluation. And uh, in, in that situation, we may ask, say, okay, let's pursue further cardiac evaluation, which includes echocardiogram, uh, non-invasive uh, stress testing, or cardiac CT angiogram. And if there are no uh, like sort of low risk finding, uh, then we proceed uh, to surgery. Uh, but if the risk are elevated finding, then uh, we are stuck. Then we have to consider alternative strategies like, okay, we will, I mean, this is like ASA4 uh, cases or ASA5 for that matter, ASA4.
Uh, and then deferral of surgery, uh, non-invasive treatment, whether they can be managed conservatively, mm. do we need to go for palliation? Or if they, we need to proceed with surgery, uh, then this is obviously with an informed uh, high risk where the patient told there are very high chances of dying on table or being on the intensive care. And uh, in the post-operative period, we need to consider about uh, troponin surveillance to see how the uh, disease or the you know, stress of surgery anesthesia has affected the uh, cardiac health. Well, thank you for listening to this. Uh, these are the latest guidelines from uh, 2024. These came out uh, just early this, uh, this month.